Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today we've got some pretty interesting stuff. First up, Bitcoin price will bolt higher if Biden wins. Rise slower with Trump, says Max Kaiser. And if you don't know Max Kaiser, he's a pretty outgoing type of guy, big Trump supporter, so it's kind of surprising what he's talking about here. But in all honesty, what he's going to say right now, nobody's going to like. Also, Voyager Digital buys European crypto exchange focused on institutional investors. And what this says to me is that Voyager wants to branch out to the European market. And on the heels of the fantastic news of PayPal offering to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrencies of four projects, which XRP was not one, Ripple Executive explains why PayPal is excluding XRP from new crypto business. Which is going to lead us into one of the most depressing stories I've seen in a long time. U.S. moves to cast a wider net for catching money launderers, crypto or otherwise. And even though I think we need a little regulation, this is going way, way, way overboard. Before we get out, let's take a look what's going on in the market. So today it is Saturday, October 24th, and things are looking pretty good. It is 4 p.m. Texas time, and uh, Bitcoin still holding strong above 13k, and we uh, we're at 13 now, 13,100. So it's uh it's doing its thing, and uh, I'm actually pretty surprised and uh, cautiously optimistic about what could happen in the future. So we're up 1.3% for 24 hours, 15, almost 16% for a one week charge. So that is great news. Ethereum up 0.4% to 410. Hopefully we can get to that 425, maybe even 450, up 12% for seven days. Tether's tether. XRP tied to the quarter, 25 cents. Not too bad though. Hey, it's staying strong, it's staying stable. That's great. Bitcoin Cash 1.6. Of course, they are a part of that PayPal integration. Maybe we should call Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin the new PayPal Mafia. Anyhow, Chainlink. Chainlink's up uh, almost $13. That is massive. 20% uh, for the week, so pretty darn good. Everything, let's, let's just be honest. Everything's up. Everything's great. Uh, great stories, great news. Uh, everybody's happy. Dancing in the streets. Fantastic. Let's see if there's any real losers out there. Uh, NEM, 1.4. Look, if negative 1.4 is the worst we get, uh, still a pretty great day. And that's, well, 2.3 for Aave. Hey, what are you going to do? 0 0.2, 1 2. This is a great weekend. I mean, usually, I mean, how long does it actually stay up like this uh, after we have good news, especially on a Saturday? If this holds through Sunday, uh, we're going to see some pretty big numbers because Sunday is usually when everything just takes a little bit of a little bit or a big of a dip. So we will find out. And yeah, that's what's going on the market. So I'm pretty happy. Let's uh, jump into today's top stories. So first up, uh, if you don't know Max Kaiser, he is a pretty outgoing guy. Big Bitcoin maximalist. Everything else is trash. That kind of person, which, you know, hey, good for him. But uh, he sat down with Cointelegraph and just had a little frank discussion, as he usually does. And some of the things he says are they're pretty entertaining, I must admit. So he first talks about Paul Tudor Jones. I'm not going to get into that because everybody's talking about how Paul Tudor Jones says Bitcoin's great. It's like investing into Amazon or Apple at the very beginning. Uh, no, that's not uh, that's not the big story. This is interesting. And he's got a great point. So they asked him, were you surprised the news that PayPal is entering the Bitcoin and crypto space? And he says, no. PayPal, like all companies, came to the realization faster than others that Bitcoin is an existential threat to their business. And to ignore it, would mean going out of business. So you have to think back and really mull that over. Do you, do you think that businesses will go completely out of business if they don't adopt Bitcoin? I don't know if it's that far, but I will say this, any kind of financial institution, any kind of bank, any kind of payment processor, if they don't adopt Bitcoin, I mean, or cryptocurrency digital assets, uh, they're really risking themselves to really fall by the wayside with uh, innovation happening all around it. Look, nobody wants to be Blockbuster. That is, a, it, it's, it's amazing. Blockbuster became a, just became a verb because of uh, what had happened to it as it could have actually bought Netflix uh, when it was coming up. They didn't. And uh, now there's like one Blockbuster in Alaska or something. So in all honesty, uh, I think right here, he's totally correct. And uh, we'll see how it all plays out in the future. Moving down, he talks about, and before I talk about this one, let me just preface it with, um, he's going to talk about Peter Schiff. Peter Schiff is a huge gold bug. Uh, he hates Bitcoin. At least he says that. But I think he's just a great marketer because, uh, you know, he's got to say Bitcoin sucks because he's, a, you know, he's all into gold. So why would you say that Bitcoin's awesome if you're selling gold? So the problem with Schiff here is that he did something a little goofy, allegedly, allegedly. Uh, he opened up a bank in Costa Rica and he's under investigation by the United States for money laundering. 
and bypassing a bunch of different laws with this bank. So it will remain to be seen what happens. But if it if he is proven guilty, that would be enormous. And again, it is allegedly. I'm not here to uh, dance on anybody's grave prematurely, but uh, you know. It is what it is. So Max gets asked about uh, this particular topic. They say, uh, in June, you said that Peter Schiff would buy Bitcoin at 50000 Is the price still the same? And he writes back or says back, yes, I predict that the combination of his business failing plus his legal fees will force him to finally succumb to reality and will come to Bitcoin with his tail between his legs, begging forgiveness, and the timing will be around Bitcoin 50000 So, I mean, no one wants to dance in anybody's grave and kick them while they're down, but uh, Max has no problem. <laughs> With, with doing that and again it's all allegedly so we'll see how it all plays out but uh that was uh that was quite the rub moving on he states uh the questions asked is gold bugs say that gold will win regardless of who wins the u.s election who do you think is best for bitcoin biden or trump how do you expect bitcoin will react to the election results next month so before i read it i'm just going to tell you right now that nobody nobody on the left the right or the middle is going to like this answer because <laughs> It's just it's just a loaded answer, and it's actually pretty funny. So Max says, a Biden win means a win for corruption and the deep state. So I would expect Bitcoin's price to bolt higher as people panic by unconfiscatable Bitcoin before Biden's socialist jackbooted thugs start confiscating everything in a replay of 1938 Crystal Knot. And uh, so, I mean, <laughs> whichever side you're on, at first you're probably like, yeah, Biden's going to be great. And then he comes back, it's like, well... He, he might be good for crypto, but he's bad for everything else. And, he, and then he says, you know, it goes, but with Trump, the U.S. has a chance at a more orderly tradition. Two Bitcoins, the price would move up more slowly. And then, you know, if since you're in the space, you're like, well, I don't want that to happen either. So you kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. And again, this, uh, I'm, this channel is not political. There's a ton of other channels you can go to to go find politics. I mean, it's all running rampant. I'm just going to say this. I will probably just vote for Brock Pierce for president as he is running for the president of the United States. You don't know Brock Pierce. He's been involved in cryptocurrency for quite some time. Also, I uh, was a part of the Mighty Ducks. He's a child actor, but he is founder of Blockchain Capital. So uh, I like that. So again, this is just a cryptocurrency digital asset channel. Let's not go into politics. Uh, we know where the space is going, right? It doesn't really matter which president really gets uh, elected, which senator comes in or congressman or judge or whatever else. Cryptocurrency digital assets are, are going to dominate over the next couple of years. And uh, we are in the right place at the right time. And I think we can all rally around that. So moving on, he states that Michael Saylor, or the question is Michael Saylor said that he bought Bitcoin to protect cash reserves from melting like an ice cube. Do you think Google, Amazon, etc., will make similar realizations? And Max gives a pretty thought out answer. It's, it's great. He says, yes, the inflation genie is out of the bottle and cash is trash. But the important thing here is that Michael Saylor went against the prevailing wisdom of buying back his own stock, a move that takes advantage of a reckless money printing Fed and instead essentially goes to war with the Fed by embracing Bitcoin, an asset hard coded to destroy the Fed. And, uh, you know, if you really think about that, that is the big thing. So whether you have fiscal policy, monetary policy, uh, the Fed is doing it all. And they have a lot of power uh, that they are wielding right now. And once you have power, it is hard to give that power back. So don't expect this to be a nice, smooth transition from the Fed to cryptocurrency digital assets. Expect this to take a long time. Expect it to be very bumpy. Expect it to be very dirty. Uh, but in the end, I think we're on the right side. And I will say this, and this is the, an article that I had referenced before. It's uh, from a website called Bitcoin Treasuries. And when he talks about that these other publicly traded companies or just corporations or entities in, in general are going to look at Bitcoin a little bit differently. I mean, look at what's happening. I mean, Mike was, Michael Saylor was the first one for MicroStrategy. Uh, he really was. And they bought a massive amount of Bitcoin and they bought 425 million. Well, today that value is 500 million. So they made a cool 75 million. And how long? How long has it been? Three weeks? Four? I, I can't remember. Three weeks, four weeks, something like that. So uh, that's pretty good. And all these other companies that are sitting on their, their, their fiat, their, their treasury, they're probably thinking to themselves, hmm, maybe this isn't as unstable as we thought it was. I'm going to tell you right now, Michael Saylor is going to go down as a visionary. 
because he's going to be the first one to do it successfully. Nobody wants to be first, but nobody wants to be last. And you got all the other companies like Galaxy Digital, Mike Novogratz. I mean, they bought at 134 uh, and now it's worth 217 Square, they made a cool $11 million over, what, a couple weeks? And everybody's up. So congratulations to all those guys. I mean, fantastic. This is actually, you know, showing the light to everybody else. Uh, Stone Ridge, uh, the latest one, they put $150 million in. And, uh, well, they have 27, 28, somewhere. They, they're up a lot. They're up like $27 million. Uh, and that's in like two weeks. So you can't beat those kind of returns. Good luck finding that in the traditional market. So these companies are to look from the outside in and they're going to say, you know what? We need to get in on that. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on.